Good morning all, or it might not be good morning when you watch this, but in this video, we are going to be doing a 2023 outlook video. Now, I just want to mention that sort of towards the end of last year, um, content on the channel did start to drop off quite dramatically. That is just because I think everyone needs a break at some point, and I was just in need of a break. Um, putting content out like... I do and in the in the format that I do with two channels and all of that going on um, it can be quite draining so I think a break was needed but right now we are back on the grind and we've got some big plans for finding Forex coming into 2023 however this video will be quite a long video so sit back relax grab some popcorn because we are going to be going over all of my currency pairs and we're going to be doing a proper top-down analysis uh, the content provided in this video alone is just going to be absolutely phenomenal. So if you are a new trader, make sure you stick around for the entire video and watch it all because I will be dropping some fantastic nuggets in this video. Uh, so first of all, let's go all the way to the top, starting off with GBP USD here. Uh, and now this is a trade that I've not got on at the moment, but I'm looking to get into. I think I have a limit set in here. So uh, if we're just looking on the daily time frame now, I trade sort of intraday, so I want to be in and out of a trade within sort of a day or two, like nothing too major. Um, so what I'm looking to do is do short term. So obviously, if we're looking at sort of the long term weekly, monthly time frame, so we're going to the weekly here. We are sort of looking at more of a, a sort of uptrend, a little uptrend here. So this could be also like a counter trade trend. Um, if you are sort of more of a beginner, I wouldn't advise doing this sort of thing. But if you are more sort of skilled and you know what you're doing, then this is possibly something for you. Um, we could also whack in a Fibonacci retracement tool. If we go like that, whack in a Fib from this point to this point. And then what we could be seeing here is a sort of retracement. As you can see, it pretty much pinned nicely straight off of the 61.8 on the weekly time frame. Pinned away very nicely very little drawdown if you had a sell in the 61.8 and we're falling off again so we'll have to see what's in store for uh gbp usd once again if we go into a lower time frame and this fuck this pisses me off big time right so i've waited for maybe i don't know half an hour just to make sure all these alerts don't come up during the video and the second i start recording bro they just all turn up right as i was saying Let's go on to the daily time frame so you can all see this a little bit better because the four hours are a little less clear. Uh, so we are consolidating on GBP USD at the moment since the 22nd of December all the way until today, which is the 4th of January. We've just been consolidating in this tight little range. Yes, we had a little bit of a spike down. However, that was just a brief spike down. I think what happened was uh, people, we got a break below this. People put a sell, they started consolidating and then... We rocketed through there. People had, um, you know, buys in here. They had to take profits in here. They took their profits up here. And then this is where I'm looking to target. So ideally, what I'm looking for in this zone is I'm looking for people to have to take profits and sell limits. And I'm just looking to take it down to the next major zone, which is this one. Now, you could say maybe this is a major zone as well. Uh, however, we've got a nice 1 to 2.36 risk to reward ratio here. So, yes, we could go for a sort of one to four but i don't think ideally we need a one to four risk to reward ratio i think one to two is enough let's see how price reacts at this level here and if we see a breakout then we will consider what's going on okay so fucking ads mate all they do is piss me off and looking at if we look on the one hour time frame as well as you can see sort of I don't look too deep into the candles what's going on here because we are still sort of trekking up. But it does look like there are a few sellers in this market still. I know that we are pushing up, but we're pushing up really slowly. The candles are quite small and they're not bearish candles, but they are showing sort of bearishness. Now, once again, this is trading. It could get to this level and just rock it up. We just don't know. But however, looking at all the things at the moment, overall, we are in a downtrend. We did reject the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement on the weekly time frame. And we are coming up to a major point of resistance in an overall downtrend. A sell, to me, looks like the best thing to go for. 
moving on to GBP and JPY, as you can see, what we're going to do is we're going to jump straight onto the weekly time frame here. Um, and we are at a really nice point here. So as you can see, beautiful interaction here, 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 here. We did have a huge spike down, bearing in mind. But then we got to sort of like this level down here, like so. And we sort of started to reject from that level. Um, so that's sort of the two major zones that we got drawn on. The weekly time frame at the moment, we are starting to close above. Uh, if we go into the daily time frame, we might be able to see what's going on in a little bit more detail. We are starting to get some reaction into this. Maybe that you could say that's a little doji. And now we're starting to push up. Um, this isn't convincing me at the moment. So what we're going to want to do is at least break this previous swing high before I even consider taking any trades. So although we are trading at a, a nice zone, it's not really nice enough for me to warrant getting into a trade. And then if we look at it on the four hour time frame, you could say we are breaking and retesting. So uh, there's a lot of stuff going on with GBP, JPY at the moment. Personally, I'm looking to stay out of it because what's the point of trying to force a trade on? Wait for something clear and concise to happen and then get into your trade. It makes your life so much easier. It helps with your uh, mental well-being. It helps with all the sort of emotional aspects side of trading. It's just a lot easier when you're not forcing the trade. Just relax. That's all it is. And I know, I know that it can be difficult for certain people and most people when they're beginning trading because they feel like they have to trade. Trust me, you don't. But you realise that and you learn that. And that's what it's all about. It's all about learning. So, moving on. GBP AUD, we're looking at the weekly time frame. Once again, not a lot going on on GBP AUD. We had this nice support zone. Broke. Maybe what I'd like to see is coming for a retest of this zone before looking to buy this market probably back to these swing highs here. That would be sort of my ideal trade. So what we do is we've got that signed on to there like so. And then we can get a push back down to here and then we can get a trade from here back up to that. Once again, sort of maybe just a consolidation for GBP AUD. Uh, it's the start of the year. People have only just started trading. There's a lot going on in the world at the moment. So we'll just have to wait and see. Moving on to what we are now. NZD USD. So what we're going to do is get rid of that. On the weekly time frame again. We've got this sort of nice little double top form in here. Similar thing to all the other pairs. Possibly a consolidation coming on. This is on the weekly time frame. So since the 28th of November, we've just been going sideways. And if we go into the daily time frame, you'll be able to see this a little bit more clearly. Once again, we pushed up. We got a break, hit this, and we're just sort of trickling away now. It's not really a lot going on on NZD USD. We got the move into this zone, and then we got the move back out, and then now we're starting to push up again. But what I would personally be looking for is even if this was to engulf this candle and this candle, I wouldn't look to place a buy there because we'd barely get a one-to-one. -one. Instead, what I'd like to do is be patient and then go for a short up here, like so, with stops just above. Give us a one-to-two. So now we've got a one-to-two risk-to-reward ratio. Stop limit in here or sell stop in here. Targets down there. Stops is just above. Basic shit. Nothing's complicated with my trading system. And I think that... If you try to overcomplicate things in trading, it does bite you in the ass, big time. So, I just trade support and resistance. Sometimes I'll put a trend line in there. Sometimes I'll throw a moving average or Fibonacci. Apart from that, it's mostly naked forex trading. And if you've read the book or whatever, you'd know exactly what I'm on about. Let's jump onto the weekly here for this one because I'm not too sure about this zone anymore. Um, it's a weird one. It's quite clear on the weekly. We got support here, resistance here, possibly turn into support. This has got two days. If this closes above, this is quite a nice support zone. Maybe we could take a buy from this low here to that high there. Possible thing. We'll draw that on just in case. So what we've got is we've got this, like so. Once again, consolidating for NZD JPY. So we could go for a long position here. If we could get that. Stop just sort of below that low and then target in sort of up there. Almost a one to two. Couldn't ask for much more than that, to be honest. And we got this sort of zone here, which it sort of had some interaction at, like so. Maybe what we might see is a sell off then. 
So we might come back onto the daily time frame and we might see sort of a, an interaction at this zone and then a continuation play. We'll just have to see how we react once we get back up into this zone because it does look like maybe we could see a push to the downside. If that was the case, maybe you could get a quick scalping. We'd go for a short position, whack it in there. Stops just above, target just below. Gives us a 1 to 1.6 1 to 1 risk to reward ratio, which isn't the greatest, but it's a scalp. So sometimes you just want to get in, you just want to get out. That's 131 pips as well, which is huge. So we'd bring that down to maybe 70. That gives us a 1 to 3 risk to reward. That's obviously with a sniper entry, sniper exit, all that good stuff. Assuming a lot plays in our favor. So that's sort of my... my my thoughts on NZDJPY once again not a lot happening i think the biggest one for me at the moment is gbp usd quite a lot can go on in there if we look at um gbp jpy this has potential but once again nothing's really going on at the moment that i see if we go on to gbp aud once again nothing's happening we're, we're just being patient we're waiting for it to either come to this zone again or come back to this zone with trading, you'll realize if you are inexperienced that it's quite a bore and a wait. NZD USD, once again, quite interesting. We can get a 1 to 2 risk reward here. Um, but I'd want to see a push back into this zone. So we'll have to see how that does. Maybe we might just catapult below this zone. If we do, I'd love to say this pair lower. Uh, NZD JPY, at the moment, not a lot going on with this one. Probably the, the most boring, I would say, apart from that one in GJ. Not a lot happening. It's just sort of in no man's land doing its own thing. Gold's actually interesting. So if we go on to the weekly time frame with gold, like so, we've actually got a really nice push to the upside here. So if we look, we've got these lows down here, which we made in October. Since then, we've just pushed up and up and up. And uh, this would have been even a good sell, even on hindsight. Like this, if you was in replay mode, you've got sort of a hanging man, you've got a shooting star candle, or, you know, you're, you're looking at this and you're thinking this would be a good idea to put a sell on. We're coming into a nice zone anyway. However, we didn't break this zone. And the reason why I didn't actually take this trade and take a loss is because we had a really nice ascending trend line. What I wanted to see is a break of that before entering. So sometimes trend lines can be a bit hit and miss sometimes. In this case, it worked out well because I wanted to see a break of the trend line and then a continuation. We didn't get the break of the trend line, so I didn't take this trade and it saved us a loss. So this is why doing your technicals is so important. This is why doing it thoroughly is also just as important as doing it. There's doing it and then there's doing it thoroughly, okay? So what I'd like to see with this pair is a push back down to here. So if we get the old tool to, where's the old wand? So what I'd want to see with this pair, ideally is a push up into here, a push back down, and then a push up. Okay, so this is what the trade would sort of look like if we was to get into it. Uh, we would go for a long position here because we are starting to trend upwards. We'd put a buy into here. Stops just below, right? Target just at this zone here. Gives us a nice one to two risk reward. Once again, intraday, scalping, all that good stuff. Um, that looks like a really nice trade to me. Once again, I wouldn't look to sell up here and then buy down here because we could just quite easily break this zone here like we did with this zone. So what I'd look to do is if we get a break, buy in here. If we don't, buy back in here. Overall, my senses on gold is a push to the upside, based on what we're seeing for price action here. Right. Euro USD. Now, this is quite an interesting one, to be honest, because we are starting to push up with Euro USD as well, because we've had all of this bullishness or bearishness, sorry, for such a long time. If we look since the 24th of May 2021, we have been falling and falling hard. And then almost a year and a half later, we finally get a move to the upside. And it does look like it's making some waves. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw on our old zones. We're going to go rectangle over here. That looks like a pretty nice zone to me. We've had some interactions. Like so, we came up in here, pushed down. What I'm looking for for Euro USD is a retracement back down to the lower, time, lower side. And then by or a break above and then a continuation play. So if we go on to like the lower time frames, like the daily or the four hour, if we can plot a zone, 
maybe you might want to put your zone in down here or over here or maybe even here that would be a pretty decent zone to have so you could put a zone in there like so once again just a bit of support a bit of resistance nice and simple and then maybe we want to put a Fibonacci retracement in and let's see what's what with the old fib so we'll put a fib in we'll go from the swing lows to swing highs now you may not want to do it from the lows I'm going for but these are the lows that I want to do it from so if we go like that right on so this is what I'm looking for ideally I'd like to see a push down to 61.8 or the 7 uh, yeah the 61.8 or 78.6 but we might not get down there. We'll have to wait and see. Once again, this pair might, just like a lot of the other pairs that we're seeing today, might just end up consolidating. Right. Euro JPY. Now, this is a very interesting pair. And I actually got so unfortunate yesterday because I took a buy off of this trade here. And it just stopped me out before rocketing back up again. So, what can you do? Trading, eh? But this is a really nice pair, actually. It's respecting this zone so well. As you can see over in here, we've got a beautiful support zone right in there. It's come to test back as support. What I'm going to be looking for, ideally, is probably a... Pull that over like so. Like that. Push this just up a bit. And it's all about just getting your zones to how you want them. So like that, I think that makes more sense. So, what I'll be looking for is maybe a push up to here. If I just get my old brush out. A push back up to here like so. And then a continuation play back down. What I wouldn't want to do, once again, nice and conservative and easy. Just put a sell limit up in here. No point having your stocks way up here. That's just ridiculous. I mean, depending on how you want to trade, this is, could be a good way. So if you wanted to have a sell up here, don't put a stop loss and then wait for it to come here and then put another sell on. You know, this is a good way of sort of managing your trades um, by hedging them. However, it could also continue. So there is pros and cons to hedging. Um, but you could also put a buy in here if it was to break. You could put a buy, which would then neutralize this sell. And you know, it's it's that's a whole different story. But for the purposes of this video and simplicity, what we would do is just have our stops just about there, and we would put our take profit down to there, giving us a one to two point three eight. Once again, this wouldn't take too long. We might be in this trade for two or three days, as you can see here. It took three days before we eventually got down to this point. Two or three days is what we're looking at. Nice sort of intraday. Maybe more towards a swing trader vibe with there. That's what we're looking at for Euro uh, USD JPY. Push up to there and then a push down. The NAS 100. Uh, not really looking at anything. Coming to this zone here quite nicely on the daily. Pushed up. But then we sort of found some sort of resistance on the 4 hour. And it doesn't seem to be pushing up any higher. We did sort of have a brief spell above. But then... We're sort of still just moving sideways. Not really a lot going on with NAS 100. Uh, USD Canadian dollar. This was a bit of a weird old trade. Because a lot of people would have been putting a sell on here. And then sort of you put a sell on here. Got a bullish and got or a bearish and golf in. And then it pushed right up. And then pushed up again and then pushed down. Sometimes markets can be choppy. And to be honest it looks like what this market is doing is just being choppy. It wasn't really respecting the previous zone. Still respecting this zone quite nicely. Um, at the moment, we are just moving sideways for uh, for USD CAD. Not a lot going on. So if we just box that off like so, that is a proper consolidation. We've got the tops there and all that. Maybe if we wanted to do it, we could just do it like this. And then you can maybe have something like that. I think that's all right. But once again, just moving sideways for USD CAD. And we have been moving sideways since the 5th of December. S&P 500, I don't really trade. Um, I have got things drawn on, but once again, <laughs> just move it sideways for this pair as well. The DXY is interesting. So, this is what measures the strength of the US dollar. As you can see, we are moving down. So, perhaps sales on this may not be a fantastic idea. It's all sort of hindsight trading. So, we did have a huge spell of pushing up yesterday. That was a massive push. And we started trading off again. And once again, we're just sort of consolidating. If we just draw this zone here. We are just sort of consolidating again. And that's for the DXY. Maybe this zone. Maybe you could use this zone up here. Not really a lot going on with the DXY. Once again, 
all sort of hindsight you could say it's going to come here and rock it up or you could say it's going to come here and rock it down at the moment we just don't know we just have to see how the candles interact at specific zones but that is my quick overview i'll just quickly run through them one more time so for gbp usd we're looking at sort of a consolidation i'm looking to target this area here and then take a sell to the next sort of low maybe even this low here depends how we get we might see some interaction here where we might see some bullish price action in which case i'll t uh, close the trade out or maybe close half out of the trade in profits and then let the rest run and move my stops to break even that's also a very viable option GBP, JPY, a lot going on, but I think with the sort of mixed time frames on the weekly, what we're seeing is a close above this zone, which would indicate buys, but then what we're seeing on the daily is something a little bit different. Maybe you can buy there, but it doesn't really look clear. And then four hours, it's, it's, it's not clear and concise, which is the point I'm trying to make. GBP, AUD, we're targeting this zone or this zone, and then we're going to look to sell up here, buy up here, once again, just consolidating. Not a lot going on with this compared. Uh, NZD USD probably the cleanest one at the moment that I've seen maybe that and GBP USD just looking to target up here previous lows stops above that simple going on to NZD JPY once again not a lot similar to GJ gold once again a really nice trade we're coming up into this zone now so if we can get some reaction I want to see price come back down to here at a discounted price, which is then I'd look to buy back towards the upside. That would be a beautiful trade if that happens. Euro USD consolidating, not really a lot happening. I'd want to see a break above or a break below. I wouldn't want to trade this sideways. Uh, USD JPY, this would be a really good pair if we can get a clean break to the upside and then a push down to the downside. Potentially, we could also see a push to the downside and then a retest of this zone, but overall looking to sell usd jpy nas 100 don't really worry about that uh usd cad consolidated again quite a choppy consolidation as well not really looking to trade this at the moment s p 500 we had some push to the downside maybe we'll start pushing up at the moment once again going sideways dxy once again going sideways and that has been all for me today ladies and gentlemen once again, I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you found some nuggets to take away and I hope you found some good information to take away from this video because there was a lot of nuggets in here. There was a lot of good shit in here for all of you guys, beginner, intermediate, even more advanced traders. There's a lot of stuff and good content in here for all of you. So if you want to see more of this, make sure you're liking the video. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know videos you want to see next or what I could have improved on. That all does help once again. But thank you all so much for watching. This is Luke and I'm signing out. Peace.